Hello friends, welcome to another session of BLI221. We have discussed a little bit about the library and now we will be talking about the different types of libraries that are there. We will try to uh, conceptualize here the different types of libraries, how they are different from each other and then in further sessions we will taking up all the different types of libraries one by one. So, this session would help you to know about the types of libraries and also briefly about these different types of libraries. I will also try to give you some activity here and also show you some of these types of libraries. I would request you to try to see around yourself the different types of libraries so as to have a feel of these different types and also have a feel of how they are different from each other. You know a library has been differentiated into different types because their purpose is though the purpose of a library is to serve the information needs of users but then the specific purposes objectives and functions differ slightly because they serve different types of users they exist in different types of institutions. So let us go further. If you see here on your slide on the screen you will see that I have enumerated the different types of libraries. I begin with the national library. You know national library is for the nation like every nation has a national library like we have our national library any other country has a national library. Before telling you about the national library I would just like to you people to have a view of the National Library of India. Here on the screen you see this is our National Library. It is situated in Kolkata. Before independence it was called the Imperial Library by the Britishers. Now it is called the National Library and it is situated at Kolkata. Another view of this library see how brightly lit it is and the this is a side view. So I wanted you people to have a view of the National Library so as to see how magnificent and how uh, monumental this uh, particular library is. Uh, whenever you get a chance to go to Kolkata you should visit this library and see uh, the treasure that this library possesses. And why I say treasure because any national library is supposed to have all that has been produced by that country of that fellow countrymen and on that country on the uh, history on the culture on the society of that country it is all available in the national library of that country. And there is no nation which does not have a national library it is the pride of every nation. And you know not only the national library there are other national libraries also in a country like we have a national science library. We also have uh, national libraries in different uh, fields like social sciences, humanities and the uh, such libraries are really important for any nation and these preserve the heritage of the country and they talk about how the civilization and culture has progressed. Therefore, it is a very important library. We will discuss a little bit in more detail about the national library. It is unique to the nation. Then comes the public library. Public library is a library which is meant for anyone and everyone. It does not differentiate between the different users that may use a library. Anyone can use this library and it is uh, spread over the country. You have a public library in your vicinity near your house. It may be available in any town, city, village, state and it has different levels like you. You talk of a village you say it is a village library. It is a city library. It is a district library. It is a state library. So, there is a network there are libraries at different levels and these form the public libraries and as I said it is it does not debar anyone anyone can use a public library. So, it is free for all it performs a very important function of spreading knowledge of spreading information of making people aware of our culture of our history of our civilization. Next in order is 
academic library and you know in formal education we have a library at different levels we have a library in formal education we start education at the primary level and you have a library in a primary school and it differs from any other library maybe in a pre primary school also there is a library but then you this library will have toys will have educational toys may have picture books so just to uh, see that the children there the toddlers the children there have some interest of coming to the school have a something which enables them to play and learn so it with the increasing level the nature and shape of the library changes similarly in the primary wing when the child uh, gets on to learning and studying you find that there is a change in the library similarly it moves on further with the middle school with the higher secondary and so on in the academic library next in order in the, is a college library where the child has developed a reading habit and there is more serious studies that goes on therefore you have textbooks textbooks are part of the curricula these are prescribed so every library would have a textbook similarly there are reference books there are other general books which students would like to read beyond textbooks and learn and strengthen their learning and reading similarly there are magazines there are magazines that help children to develop their general knowledge their general science similarly there are newspapers so this is how the college library school library and further the university library which provides universal education to all this has a very important library in it and further you go at the top level in the academic setup the you call it a research library in fact this classification differs in some countries they call it they differentiate research from academic libraries they they form it as a separate uh, category uh, academic library does not include research academic includes only up to the uh, education at the highest level and for at the level of research they differentiate research libraries from academic libraries otherwise also when you talk of research organizations r&d organizations they to have libraries they are also research libraries so research may happen in any institution but when you talk of a research library it is particularly oriented towards research towards the needs of researchers so such libraries are called research libraries then in order you see special libraries special by the terminology itself it says these are special in nature these are not academic but they are special they are may be special because they concentrate on some subject they may be a, a library in agriculture a library in engineering a library in home economics in home science it could be a library in library and information science so such a library is a special library and we call it a special library because it concentrates on a particular specific special subject only or it may also be a library which caters to a special class of readers maybe this library is for the differently abled they have special needs therefore this takes care of their needs it may also be special in the type of material that it has like it may be a video library it may be any it may be a map library it may be a media library so all these types of libraries belong to the class which is called a special library so now you know you may be in a little doubt that whether a engineering college library is a college library or a special library there is a little overlap though since this library is established in a academic institution it is in a college therefore it is a academic library but you can have a engineering library like i give you an example it may be bharat heavy electricals bhel or it may be engineers india limited so if it is attached to a engineering institution it specializes 
in an engineering subject only though that also is for engineering but that is in a college library so there is a little overlap that a special library catering to a particular subject may also belong to the category that is academic but then this is how we differentiate the special library from other libraries see these days we have libraries that do not have a physical existence and they have their own importance because uh, the majority of information today is digital in nature and this information is not only digital in nature it they, it has no counterparts in the physical world in the printed world so it could be such a library and such library is called a digital library virtual library so a library which exists which does not have a physical existence which does not have which does not lie in the within limited within the physical environments of a, a building uh, and it's it houses digital collection only that is also a class of library but it could be a mix of the two it could be digital as well as printed such a library is called a hybrid library so you see that there are different types of libraries that have been categorized on the basis of the material that they carry on the basis of the types of users that they serve and this material could be on the basis of subject it could also be on the basis of form and format of the material or it could be on the basis of purpose that they serve so this is how libraries have been categorized now let us come to some definitions like national library they say it is a library maintained by the nation and i have given the reference to this definition this definition has been taken from ala glossary of library and information science terms you know this glossary is a very well uh, known and acknowledged glossary and a glossary gives definition of terms and this has been given by the american library association and i would like to show you the latest edition of this glossary for your reference this is the fourth edition of the ala glossary that you may like to consult and you may consult whenever you are in need to know some new term that comes to uh, your knowledge and you should always consult this glossary and there are other glossaries also so don't be in dark don't be in doubt whenever you come across a new term try to find out what does it mean what is its scope so a national library is maintained out of government funds government supports the library as i said it is a national pride of a nation therefore government takes care that this library really serves its purpose really uh, it leads other libraries in the nation it is there on the top supporting other libraries therefore this has its own importance this has its own role therefore it is maintained by the government it serves the whole nation see the responsibility of such a library therefore it has its own importance and the books that are there in a national library are for reference only i think you would agree that yes they should be for reference because you know a book taken out of a library has all chances that it may get lost it may be damaged it may not come back to the library therefore this is a reason that a national library is for reference that any book that is there is really a, a treasure for that library the library may not like to lose such a book therefore this is the reason why it is so national libraries are usually copyright libraries this you will find here on this slide it says they are copyright libraries now what is a copyright library why do you say it is a copyright library actually a copyright library means that any book that is published in the country any book that is published in the country should be deposited in this library that is a copyright library and you you can very well imagine that a library if you wants to have everything that has been published in the library how difficult it would be so it has been said that such libraries would be copyright libraries so automatically that is published in the country is made available in the national library because the function of such a library is to preserve everything that has been published in the country in the form of books periodicals newspapers 
and also not only today but also for tomorrow. Therefore, a law is made and I will tell you in the future, uh, further slides about this law and therefore, this is not only anything that is published in the country but also on the country in other countries is also maintained in the national library. Like if something is published on India in other country should also be made available in this library that is the function of a national library. So, if you see as I was telling you about copyright library there are not only the national library but also three other libraries. There are four copyright libraries in India and a law has been made for that. That it says the delivery of books act. It says that anything that is published in India, a one copy of that should be deposited in all these four libraries, one copy each. So National Library Kolkata, Konemera Public Library Chennai. So you see all zones, National Library has its own importance. Konemera Public Library means one copy available down south, one copy in Central Library Mumbai and one in Delhi Public Library. So, you have the resources widely far distributed in the country. So, the book should be available in all these libraries. This is the Konemera Public Library. As I was telling you about Konemera Public Library, this is the Konemera Public Library in Tamil Nadu, Egmore. So, this has a copy of all that is published. Similarly, this is the Central Library Mumbai where a copy of all books is available. You may like to visit it once you are there. Similarly, the Konemera Public Library also because of the importance of these libraries, they carry all books that have been published. They all books that have been published in the country are made available there. Similarly, this is the Delhi Public Library and uh, you would like to really see how they maintain a copy of all that is published and I told you again to remind you that these are all copyright libraries. They according to law, according to the delivery of books act, a copy of each book published in the country has to be made available in these libraries. Now, as I was telling you that the National Library is responsible for acquiring and conserving all significant publications in the country. You would be really wondering what do you mean by significant publications? You know, there might be certain publications that are just for recreational needs that may not have the significance because of what they are reporting. Therefore, in case National Library would have every such thing, then every building will fall short. Therefore, it is decided that what should be made available. It functions as a deposit library. As I was telling you that every uh, book published is deposited there. Every National Library produces a National Bibliography. What do you mean by National Bibliography? See, Bibliography means it is a list of books. This bibliography is of different kinds. It could be list of books in a particular subject. It could be list of books by a particular author. It could be list of books in a particular language. It could be list of books published in a particular period of time. Similarly, it could be a list of books published in a particular country. So, who will do that? Who will prepare such a list? Only where these books are available and these books are available in a national library. Therefore, the national library is supposed to produce a national bibliography and see at one place you come to know the, the what has been produced in the country such is the importance of a national bibliography. So, not only books published on the country, in the country but also outside the country. Therefore, the national library serves as a national bibliographic information center. It also compiles national union catalogs and not only current bibliographies but also retrospective old of old books also because it is not always important that current books only are important. You may also like to bring to light, bring to light books that were important and published in the olden times. So, such bibliographies are also produced by a national library and this has been given by the UNESCO recommendations concerning 
international standards of standardization of library statistics. As I was telling you, national library is on the top in the network of libraries in a country. Therefore, it provides a leadership to other libraries. As I was telling you, it's a permanent depository. It acquires all types of materials. It provides library bibliographic services and it coordinates and cooperates the functions and activities of all different libraries. It serves not only the clientele, general public of the country, but also the government also. So, National Library has this important function that it provides library services to the government of the country. It is a very important function of any national library. There are different national libraries in different countries and uh, if you want to have a comprehensive view uh, knowledge of uh, our national library, I have given here a link of a video that has been produced by us in IGNU on National Library Kolkata. You may like to view that, uh, uh, listen to this, it is a uh, comprehensive video on the activities, functions and also the views of people on National Library. I would advise you all to watch this video, you, this link is available to you. As I have also given National Libraries uh, examples and names of National Libraries of different countries like the US National Library, it is called Library of Congress, British Library is called British Library and similarly, the every nation has a National Library and they have names. I would uh, request you now that since we have discussed about national libraries, you try to do this activity and you can visit national libraries. If possible, you can do it physically. You can, whenever you get a chance, wherever you have, in whichever country you are, you should see national library of that country. Because as I was telling you that it is a treasure of the collection, culture, history of that country. Therefore, you should visit that library. It is a massive institution, it has a massive collection and therefore try to visit. If you are not able to visit physically, at least virtually you should visit these libraries. Try to see their history, the objectives of such libraries, activities of these libraries, the services that they provide, what sort of staff they have because their staff is also different because of the expertise that is required in such a library. See the level of responsibility that a national library has, therefore the staff also has to be something which is able to provide these services. Now public library, as I was telling you that public library is open to the general public. Anyone can join and avail its services. I told you that it is available at different levels, state level. It is called a state central library. Every state has a state central library. You, whichever state you belong to, try to see what state central library has, where it is, how does it look like. Similarly, in your district also, there is a district library, city libraries, town libraries and down to the village, taluk also you have libraries. So, Besides that, that, because the public library wants everyone to have access to library, whichever area the li public library is not able to serve, they provide mobile library services. They have branch libraries. Even they provide these mobile library services in jails also, in hospitals also. And a little dated, but then uh, around 55,000 public libraries are there in our country. You know public libraries are provided not only by the government but also by charitable organizations, non-government organizations as I was telling you by uh, other organizations even at the level of RWAs, the resident welfare associations also provide such libraries. So the main aim of a public library is to educate the people, to entertain the people, to take care of the recreational needs, informational needs, educational needs and whatever possible through these it is there. There is no limitation even also they act as activity centers, they act as the uh, local information centers they act as a local gateway to information and knowledge and they also act as community centers. So they have a very important role public library. I would give you an activity here, visit the website of 
Delhi Public Library or even any other public library that you wish to and check its history, objectives, organization structure, activities, services, whatever you can see, you, this will give you a feel of how a public library functions. I have mentioned here Delhi Public Library only because it has a very uh, uh, systematic way, it has a very uh, vast structure, it is doing it in a very organized way, but any other public library is also doing it. So, you may choose a public library of your choice also, it is not that only Delhi Public Library, this is just an example. Academic library, we have discussed that it starts with a school library, going on to college library and further to the university library. Now, you can visit the websites of some academic libraries because these days you know most of the libraries maintain their websites. They are making available their services outside the library also. Therefore, the first thing in providing the services outside the library is that they have their own websites. So, you try to visit the websites of some academic libraries which you wish to and note down their objectives their organizational structure, the activities that they do, services that they provide. I have given this activity with an intention that you will know all these things realistically, you will be able to really know and appreciate how these libraries work and function. Special library as we have defined that they belong to a particular subject, they could be on a research development organization, they could also be attached to a government institution, government ministry, a department and similarly as I said a special library could also be in a particular type of material, it could be a manuscript library, it could be a dissertation library, map library, video library, braille library. And similarly, it could be attached to an institution like a hospital, prison. These are all examples of special libraries. Like if you see that the National Science Library is both a science library as well as national library. So, there is over, overlap also. Like Indian Council of Agricultural Research, it is a agricultural library, but it is also con considered like a national agricultural library also. So, the overlap is always there, but then you should know how they have been divided and they have been divided because of certain characteristics that they possess. You should also try to see and visit the websites of some of these libraries and try to see how they function. And this is the activity that I have given you here. You can note down and try to do these. This will help you in your learning. This will help you to really uh, correlate with what to uh, theoretically learn with how it is practically happening. Now, a digital library. As we said that any digital library has material in digital form and the benefit of a digital library is that and you can use it anytime, anywhere while you are traveling, while you are studying, while you are relaxing also because it is available at your doorstep, at your workplace, at your home or while you are traveling also. So, 24 by 7 by 365 instant access, no barriers of time and place. So, National Digital Library of India is, an, is a beautiful example of a digital library. It has enormous resources for all class of readers right from a nursery student to a research scholar and see how it is possible that all class of libraries are there within one library that is a digital library. That is the beauty of a digital library. You should visit this uh, particular library as I said or any other digital library and also see how they are working, how they are different from other libraries that are traditional libraries or also a hybrid library. So, I think by, by learning, by doing by learning, you learn better. Here on your screen, I have given you a definition of a digital library. They are organizations that provide resources including specialized staff. It is not merely the collections that are there. To provide you that collections, to provide an organized collection, there is a staff there. They select the material. It is not that they provide you anything and everything. And there is a structure. There is a structure to provide you access to this. There is an intellectual access to provide to them. and then to interpret what is there, distribute it, 
preserve the integrity of that material and ensure the persistence over time of the collections of the digital material so that they are readily and economically available for the user community. So this definition I have taken from Digital Library Federation and this is the definition of a digital library. Similarly, you have a virtual library which provides to links to information at different places. It does not have a collection of its own. It's a gateway to information. It is like a referral center. You try to see some examples of virtual libraries. As I said that it is different from a virtual library. A digital library has its own collection. Virtual library provides links to different places. It has no collection of its own. So see some virtual libraries and note down for your clarity. As I had defined earlier, a hybrid library is a mix of a print and a digital library and you would see that most of the print libraries are moving towards hybrid library. You would rarely see libraries which are purely print. You, most of the print libraries have moved towards being a hybrid library. They have their own print collection and also digital collection and not only their own, they also provide access to digital collection which is outside them, whichever is possible, either it could be free or it could be subscribed digital resources. Our university library is also a hybrid library and you would see many such libraries around you. You would like to make a note of all these different types of libraries. So learners, today we have started with what is a library. We have tried to see how the library is classified into different categories. We have seen that it is on the basis of their subjects, on their materials, on their users and how they are slightly different from each other. We have also thought of doing some activities really going and seeing these different types of libraries so that we are able to learn better, we are able to clarify the different characteristics and are able to differentiate between these different types of libraries. I hope this learning will help you to set uh, to understand and get a picture of a library and I think this will improve your learning. Thank you. Mm -hmm.